Hey guys, this is Bill with the Hangar Rats. We are starting another engine overhaul series. This is going to be a Lycoming 0360A1A out of a Beechcraft Traveler, I believe it is. Um, so, uh, normally when we get an engine, it's nice, it shows up, it's packaged, and all that thing. All that kind of stuff. Well, uh, this is what this one looks like. Hey guys, we're back. So here we have an 0360A1A that the owner started the overhaul on his own. He just got kind of caught up with some other life cut in the way type stuff. And it was basically in a pile on the shop floor and asked us to finish it. So sometimes we have uh, stuff that shows up like this. Sometimes we, we don't. So we're going to, uh, we're going to try to make the best, the best of it. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to go and triage all this stuff, get it sorted, cleaned up enough to get it out to the machine shop and all that stuff so hang on here we go first things first we're going to kind of uh tell you what, let me uh give me just a minute i'm going to kind of empty this table off Okay, so here we go. The um, crankcase, we got the table kind of cleaned off pretty well. Keep that from getting knocked over. So we've got the case set, and the owner did the right thing. He put a piece of cardboard between the two halves, which is the best thing you can do at all times. So it looks pretty good. Um, we've got numbers up here, serial numbers and all that. Um, this is a dynafocal engine mount installation. It is, this is what they call a narrow deck. And I'll talk about that here in a little bit. So this is a narrow deco 360, year old, the older spec engine. Everything it looks pretty good. There's a couple bolts here. We've taken pictures of those. We're going to take those off before we send this out. Um, make sure that the oil uh, pump and all that stuff is, or pardon me, pressure relief valve is out, and everything looks good there. Um, so this is pretty well set to go. There's a plate on here that says it was once upon a time overhauled by Atlantic Aircraft Engine, wherever they are, if they're still around. So that's what we have here. The case set looks pretty good. I'm going to take off this, um, these bolts here real quick. Okay, we've got these uh, bolts off. I took pictures of all this before we, before we, um, I took them off, loosened them up. Now, you notice I'm using a little impact wrench. I only use that to take these things apart. I never use those putting them together. If you see somebody with an impact wrench putting an aircraft engine or component together, they really need to back away from the aircraft. That's not the right tool to use. But on disassembly, it's not a problem. It speeds things up, and we're not going to hurt any of the fasteners. Um, and most importantly is we're going to um, mark the parts where they came from. So we can, now we're going to probably go back with all new hardware, but we've got the old hardware so we know what to replace. So I'm going to just set that up here. So that's cool. So as far as the case set goes, we're in pretty good shape. I'm going to set that on the floor, looking for some wood. Never, never set any machine piece of equipment on a concrete floor. So we're going to set that on there, and then we'll package this up, and this will be brought to the machine shop which hopefully should be next week. Okay, next item is the cam. Now the owner indicated that the cam was not uh, any good, and I'm just looking at the profiles. These don't look too bad, but we'll send this up here for, we'll send this to them. I'm seeing um, some minor parking. Uh, looks like this lobe is shot. Looks like this lobe is shot. And this is normally the one that goes, this is your, in between your, where's the lot of coming? Uh, one and two, I believe, up in the front. Uh, this is normally the one, <laughs> pardon me, this is the one that always fails, typically. Um, 
and I, I don't know why it is, but uh, it's the second lobe. It's a shared lobe with the two cylinders, the uh, left and right cylinders, and the profile on this one looks pretty bad. So this will probably mandate a, a new cam and lifter set. So we'll bring it up anyway and have them red tag it just to confirm that it is not rebuildable. Crankshaft, here we have the crankshaft, and what we're going to do there is uh, we're going to take the gear off. Uh, this will be um, inspected separately. So crankshaft looks okay. I'm looking at the slinger ring. It looks like there's a machine repair here. We've got to make sure that that's still okay. On the That's on the um, slinger. This is the thrust face for your um, propeller and all that. This looks pretty good. Most importantly, and when we get done with this video, I'll spray everything down and whatnot. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to get this gear off the end. So we've got to knock a little lock tab over, and then we will take it off with a wrench. Okay. Okay. And we will get the lock tab out of there. Okay, we're going to let the machine shop take this out. And as far as we're concerned, this is ready to go to the machine shop. So we're going to set it over on the floor on wooden blocks and uh, package it up for uh, tomorrow. So let's do that. Okay, next item. Next item is the uh, flywheel or starter ring gear assembly. This is a Lycoming part. This is a Beechcraft part. So we're going to take these apart and this will get cleaned up and all that. This one actually has some extra bosses on it for alcohol for the propellers. So that's what this is for. And that gets, comes in here in this area here. So if you've, if you've got a different kind of ring gear, you're going to see that this flange is a little bit shorter on other, other aircraft. This isn't here, but this is the uh, alcohol gallery for um, that. I've taken a picture as far as clocking and all that. Um, there's a couple unique features here. Uh, again, we're going to look at some different stuff here, but this one here has a zero and that goes on the large boss on the crankshaft. So that's a match mark there. It should only go on one way easy. Keep an eye out for that. I've seen it where people have actually gotten them on wrong and just cranked it on down. Messed it up. Not good. So we're going to hit this real quick and take these guys all off. And this is our crankshaft bolt. We don't throw anything out until the engine's complete. Real important, do not throw anything out until the engine's complete. Okay, and that is going to go in our keep bucket over there, but probably be keep and throw out. Okay, let's get this guy disassembled. And we'll actually clean this ourselves. There's no reason we don't have to send this out to anybody. It's a simple casting. We'll check for cracks and all that, but this will go out, or uh, we'll refinish this ourselves. Okay, so this is this is a key part. It looks good. I'm not seeing just an initial looky-loo. I don't see any cracks and things of that nature, so that looks pretty good. And we've matched it to this, so we should be in pretty good shape. The uh, timing marks and all that, you can hardly even see this when these are installed. So what we're going to do is when we refinish this, we're going to actually fill this with white paint. The markings here so you can see it on the edge when you're doing your timing check. So more hardware going to the bags. All this hardware will be replaced with new stuff. The standard and hardware will all get replaced. So that takes care of that. These are we're going to keep here. So we'll set that over on this side of the shop. Okay. Accessory case. We're going to send this up to the shop. Now, one thing we want we do want to do is we want to, um, we'll take off any 
fittings. This has a cap on it, so we'll just leave this be. I'll actually take the cap off. We're going to take pictures of all these fittings and all that to make sure that they are where they are as far as orientation. If the shop does take them apart, then we know exactly where they are. So I'll take pictures of this. And then I'll also take it straight on so that I know how the clocking is. This is an oil pressure fitting. Um, this is a breather line, uh, case breather. Um, oil pressure fitting, this goes to your, that. Um, I don't know if that's a propeller. I don't think it's the uh, governor line. That's another line there. Um, but this probably goes to the oil cooler. Uh, there's also a seal in here. Um, they'll take that out, so I'll just leave that be. I'm not going to worry about the gaskets when they tank it. They'll clean that. They'll take these three studs out and then resurface where the oil pump is and all that. So that's cool. Everything's looking good there. This actually doesn't look bad. There's a little debris, um, but not too bad. I'd say one to two thousandths, um, maybe. Really, it's actually in pretty good shape. So for the age of it, I assume this is a full length overhaul. So this is pretty well ready to go to the shop. Okay, this is the oil sump. Um, pretty simple. What they're gonna do there at the shop, uh, like the accessory case, they're gonna clean it, media blast it, make sure everything's good. On this particular, uh, on the Lycomings, what they will also do is they'll make sure that these are not tight and all that. If they have to, they'll reswage these to make sure these are tight. This is your serial number plate and all that. That and also there should be a matching serial number on the top back of the, the uh, crankcase. So you'll want to check on that, especially if you're buying an aircraft or something like that. You want to make sure this number and the number on the spine of the engine match. Yes, I have had it where they do not. So be careful of that kind of stuff. Um, what other kind of stuff is going on? There's some alternate uh, hookups and things of that nature. Um, there's also a drain line here. On some of the engines, these are blocked, so you have to be careful on that. Um, the fuel or the oil screen goes in here, um, oil pump inlet screen. So, short of that, this is pretty simple. Nothing really going on here. Um, I'm going to leave that on there. They'll probably take it off. Looks like someone has had their way with that, so I'm not even going to worry about it. We'll probably end up with a new one regardless. So, this is ready to go to the machine shop. Okay, the difference between a narrow deck and a wide deck engine is this is a narrow deck engine that's considered a narrow deck and when you look at the two engines side by side they look about the same but there's a couple giveaways first is the thickness of the cylinder base flange on a narrow deck engine it's much thinner and then to kind of beef it up <clears throat> the uh, beef up the hold down they have these hold down plates and then also the cylinders are held on with these um, internal wrenching nuts so easy giveaway on whether it's narrow deck or wide deck. So that's kind of the thing. These um, hold down clamps, we'll get those all put up. But that's what the difference of the cylinders is. Now I don't know what's inside here. We'll see what's going on. But we're going to uh, take all this stuff apart. And like I said, this is a little bit of a pig's breakfast. We don't normally get them like this, but uh, on this one, that's kind of the way it's going. So this could be some surprises. But inside here, I think inside here are probably rocker arms. Uh, the cylinder is apparently reasonably fresh, but what we're going to do is take the, uh, send the cylinder out, but we'll hang on to the rocker arms and rocker shaft and replace those and we'll get the, send them out for machining. Okay, I'm looking here, there's a big gouge here, so we'll probably want to take a look at that and do what we have to do. Clean it up. This hardware is pretty rubbish. We'll put all these screws in it just because it's so cheap. Okay, boom. Okay, let's see if this is going to come out for me. Okay, we'll do that later, so I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, let's go through the hardware bins. More plastic bags. And these items are going to go out for replating. So all I want to do here is I also want to count these, make sure that everything is here. So let's see what we have. One, two, we have <clears throat> big ones and little ones. So we should have a total of 16 large ones and 16 small ones, four, four per. 
So we want to make sure we have those, make sure we're not missing any hardware, whatnot. Um, as I said, this is a little bit of a mess on this particular engine, the way we got it. And there's, okay, we got 16 of those, boom. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. These will be all degreased, cleaned up, and then put up. Okay, one, two, three, four. So we've got 16 and 16. These will get degreased and go to plating. So all the, all the nut hardware and the cylinder hold down plates. We have miscellaneous bolts and screws. I don't know where they went, so we're gonna keep those in one place. So these will go to plating, that'll be local. This will go in the trash. Okay, next one, let's see what else we have here. Got a bag here. Okay, next item is our hydraulic lifters or our hydraulic units. Now, I haven't seen the tappets, but the tappet bodies, but here are the lifter hydraulic units. Boom, 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 boom. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're in good shape there. So these will go to the machine shop. Now what I don't see are the cups and some of the other stuff. So that will be interesting. See where that is. So this ready to go to the machine shop. Don't have to label that. We know what it is. This is the main lifting eye. This will get bead blasted and go out for plating. So let's bring that back. Take the big things for plating. Good. Miscellaneous hardware. It looks like these are the case attach bolts from the case seam. So boom, all this hardware here. We'll go through this and we'll send this out for plating. And then some of this stuff in here, these are uh, oil pump bolts, things like that. They'll get thrown out. But these are case through bolts. There's some baffling type stuff. We'll put that in a separate bag. Fly is back. Lovely. So there's that. Boom, boom, boom. There. These Philister head screws, we're not going to reuse. So we'll put those in its own little junk bag. But we'll inventory all this stuff before we order up. We'll make sure we have all the correct hardware. So this stuff is throwaway, but and what I do is I normally I'll keep all the washers. I throw them out, but I'll keep them to count them. So most importantly is I will not throw anything out until this engine is complete. Rubbish Tupperware goes in the trash. Okay, I'm going to keep this nearby. This stuff will go to replate over here. Cool, that's that box of stuff. Another box of stuff. Let's see what we have here. Hoses without caps on them. We'll cap these. Um, this is prop governor. Interesting. This one looks older than the hills. Uh, it's not labeled. Probably all cooler lines. Yep, oil cooler lines. So we're going to take these, make sure we're going to get some plugs on these other hoses, but we don't need these right now. Put those over here. <clears throat> now, I'm not admitting that all the parts are in the box, and that's what we're doing tonight. But what we're going to do is I'll come up and come back later and figure out what's missing. So we have a dry vacuum pump with a sheared, sheared section on it. So this is basically rubbish. The only thing this is good for is for... Um, the only thing this is good for is reference a part number and see if this is the right one and then we'll get an, another one for the deal, the uh, aircraft. So that goes over here, but it's essentially junk. Oil dipstick tube, good, we've got that. We're just gonna empty the box out. Here's some magnetos. We'll overhaul those in the magneto shop. And then we've got some miscellaneous nuts here. And what I'm gonna do on those, I kind of know where they go. Um, all the hardware, the external hardware for the engine, as far as the seam bolts, a lot of your accessory and all that, they're all 
um, fine thread uh, MS bolts or coarse thread, um, depending on which stud they're on. Uh, they're well defined in the parts manual. I don't have a problem with that. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on because this stuff is actually pretty inexpensive, but we will uh, kind of commingle the packaging. Um, let's see, we have magnetos. Okay. The only thing in the magnetos we're going to harvest out of here is the, there should be two big heavy washers for each magneto. One. That's got a washer stuck to it. These big, thick washer, magneto washers. They're special. They're actually a Lycoming uh, or Bendix part number. So we're gonna, that goes over to plating. The rest of the stuff goes into miscellaneous hardware bag. Boom. This bag goes in the trash. Fittings, fuel pump fittings. Uh, fuel pump fittings and some other stuff. Those are nasty. We're going to clean those up. Um, what are these? Engine mount bolts. Okay. We're going to take the engine mount bolts. We'll send those out for plating, but we'll probably, they're just an AN bolt. We'll probably, I'm going to put them in the plating bag, but what we'll probably do is buy all new bolts because they're, th they're that cheap. But uh, when I do the final sort for uh, outsourcing of the plating, We'll actually take them out of take them out of the bag and th probably throw them out, but we'll get replacements. But just in case we can't get engine mount bolts for some reason, these are fine. They're structurally okay, but they're inexpensive enough. We'll just put all brand new ones in. Okay, boom! The miscellaneous plating bag, or pardon me, miscellaneous hardware bag. So yeah, we'll put these to be plated. Okay, boom, what else have we got in here? Wonderful things. Okay, uh, Okay. here we go. I'm going to get these out of the way. Move those over here. Okay, let's see what we're going to keep in here. This is the oil pump, and what we're going to do there is, um, let's see, looking at the part numbers, these look like these are the newer pumps newer pump style, but we're going to get a new, a uh, whole brand new uh, kit. This is a Lycoming kit. So there was an AD note on this um, engine, the Lycoming engine uh, years ago. So someone has either at an overhaul or at a um, gone in mid service and replaced the oil pump gears with the proper gears. There was an airworthiness directive on centered gears, an idea that Lycoming tried, which was not well advised created all sorts of pain and discontent for us. So though that will be replaced. We're just going to put that right back in. These are the long castle nuts for the oil pump. Um, those will be replaced also, but we'll keep them in the bag. Um, this is the plunger for the fuel pump. That will be replaced also. So we really don't care about any of this stuff in that this will be a 100% replace. We don't have to send it out to machine work and it goes in the miscellaneous bucket. So just trying to clean this stuff off. Put that in there, make sure we order those. Lord mounts. Yipes. Lord mounts, these are all squiffy, all kind of messed up, all uh, nasty looking. So these will be replaced on installation. That'll be the owner's an aircraft mechanic. So that will be for their consideration. So you can see these are um, all have taken a set terribly old. So we'll uh, advise that they get all new ones on that. So we'll get those out of here. Okay, engine mount bolts, get rid of that. Fuel pump, fuel pump go for, for overhaul or rebuild. So we'll set that off, pull that out. A miscellaneous tube, not sure where that goes. We'll put it back with the other tubes. Let's see what else we have in here. Um, Miscellaneous fittings. Not sure what these are for. So we will get them cleaned up and just rebag them. Probably airframe parts. So we're not going to worry about that. Uh, what is this? Oil filter housing and Vernotherm, which I haven't seen the Vernotherm. We'll probably have to go back and do some hunting in the hangar 
and look for some more parts. So we'll be going through the parts manual, doing 100% inventory and conformity. Takes more time, but it's something you gotta do. You gotta make sure you've got it all. Okay, there's that. Get rid of this. This one we can just keep. These are those fittings. Uh, those look like fuel fittings. Okay, not engine parts. These fittings are also airframe fittings, it appears to be. It says fuel pump fittings. I'm gonna put them in a better bag because this one's all oily. So we'll try to clean it up a little bit. Yuck, 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 yuck. We'll clean them up, return them to the customer with the engine. So that's that. Okay, here's part of the vacuum pump. Here's vac magneto gaskets, things like that. More hardware for attaching things. Take this out. Okay, this box is empty. Cool. Vacuum pump. Put that with the junk vacuum pump. These are the fuel pump fittings. I'll put these over here. So I have our miscellaneous stuff over here. Dipstick, put that back here. That'll get refinished and painted. Gasket, don't throw gaskets away. We're gonna keep those. Actually, I'm gonna put those in here. Make sure that we get those. We'll get those with the gasket set, but we'll, uh... okay, we're gonna send the steel part out. That's part of the, that's the uh, fuel pump drive. So we're gonna send it out to, uh, for rework this week and clean up and all that, but this we'll uh, send out for um, steel work. So, so that goes in a nice little bag. Send that off to the machine shop. Okay, that gets cleaned out. Boom. This is going to go over here. We'll remove the seal. There's a, a Chevron seal here. I'm looking at the seal, and it looks like it's been hammered in quite improperly. So this thing was probably leaking. I'll bet you a dollar or two had done it. Okay. What else have we got here? Okay, that's that. Our nuts and bolts, miscellaneous. What else have we got down here? Oh, we got all sorts of things. Spark plugs. We'll go and clean all these spark plugs. These spark plugs actually don't look bad. It looks like half of them are probably very new and the other half are uh, are probably midlife. So we'll clean those up and get those on. So that'll be a separate separate deal. So that's the spark plugs. Okay. Um, let's see what else we have in the bottom. I'm gonna do the magnetos last. Okay. Bearings. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save one of these boxes. Actually I'm gonna save it over here. I'm gonna save this one box over here for things that we're going to um, reuse. We'll probably buy new baffles, new inter-cylinder baffles. Um, actually, let me dig out what's in here. So we have, okay, drain back tubes. One, two, three, four, okie doke, cool. Let's see if we can get these things off of here. And this will all get cleaned up separately, not a problem. So we'll check for chafes and whatnot. Nice thing about Lycoming is they actually put the part numbers on the tubes, which is kind of neat. So that'll be cool. Boom, boom. Got a little twisty stuff on here, some automotive wrap. Nice, and you can see how it chafes quite nicely. And that is rubbish. We'll get rid of that crap. Boom. Okay. Cool beans. Now I'm going to take this, these hoses, these drain back tubes. We get those in the gasket kit. I think we get them in the gasket kit, pretty sure. Uh, I'm just gonna put them in my miscellaneous bag and we'll come back uh, when we inventory stuff, whatnot. So there we go, one, two, three, four tubes. These will go to degrease. I'm gonna put those in here and clean up. Okay, intake tubes, one, two, three, four. Okay, so these are pretty simple. These are also nice too. They're steel. 
Um, and the numbers are stamped in there, like Comic stamps those in. So we've got four of them. They look kind of okay. We will tank these and clean these up nice and beautiful and get them painted here. So that's not a problem there. Put those in our little reuse box. Uh, get that out of here. Eh, I guess we'll hang on to that. Boom. So there's four tubes and one, two, three, four flanges. So we're good there. And that goes into the repaint box. Okay, more stuff. Okay, these baffles here, what I typically do on these is um, I'll reuse these parts, the springs. We'll send those out for plate. We'll send these um, Z hooks out for plate also. And then these, uh, Superior, I believe, is making new ones now. So we'll end up buying brand new ones. These are chafed through pretty bad. Let's see what this one looks like. Yeah, it's been cut through and all that. And it's just not worth jacking with. This is a like homing part, not a beachcraft part. So we'll put new ones in. A lot of times you'll see these will crack in here. They'll chafe. This has a whole bunch of RTV. Um, kind of a cobbed up job. A lot of people get hung up. We'll just talk about that. A lot of people get hung up on the air and it's got to be RTV and all that. Um, and that's just a FOD issue. The other thing is, think about this. A lot of folks are worried about the air. The air is coming in here into the front of your engine at 150 miles an hour. It's not going to hang around. Um, it's going to want to get out. So putting this on here is kind of a false economy. You're, you're really, it's moot. If, if that's the, how critical your cooling is, you have bigger issues. But um, trying to pack 150 mile an hour air into the front of this thing, and it's got to find a way out. Um, you don't want to, you, you don't really want to capture the hot air in the engine and in between the cylinders. So yeah, you want to force around the cylinders, but at 150 miles an hour, it's going to figure that out. So I don't know, that's just something that I always thought was funny. Let's see what else we have in here. Um, dump this out. Nope, these go, into, these go into plate. Where's our plating bag? Okay. Uh, main bearings, um, we're just going to hang on to them and we'll just double check the part numbers against the uh, ones that are called out in the uh, parts manual. We can look at these. I'm looking at a little fretting going on, but it looks like it's clamped pretty tight. Um, these are so tight it's kind of tough to read the part numbers. Um, these are three thousandths, uh, three thousandths undercut. So the crank will probably end up getting a cut. Uh, it may be getting a cut. Um, you can see here some fretting going on and all that. Uh, this is the outside. This should be stay, this should stay put. This is the crankcase split line. So um, it really doesn't look that bad, but uh, I am seeing um, there's some debris. There's just actually some shitty debris. I don't know what's going on there. Um, kind of impaled on that. This one has more rubbing in this area here. This actually looks pretty good. So long story short, we'll get all new. We're going to have a fresh ground crank polished anyway, so we'll see how that goes. But it looks, appears to be a three under crank. Um, let's see if I can find part numbers on this one real quick. I'm trying to do this quick for you guys so you don't have to spend all evening watching me. Okay, those are going to be go in the, I'm going to put those in with the nuts and bolts and everything else because we're going to go through that. Uh, primer line, these are extremely important, these primer line clamps. So you uh, want to definitely keep an eye on those. But these will get cleaned up, uh, fresh screws and whatnot, but uh, these, and they're ding dang expensive. So these will go in um, for the primer lines. And we have the primer lines somewhere. Yeah, we've got the primer lines. So I'm going to put that in the used hardware bin. Um, exhaust gaskets, uh, we're going to put all new ones on. They come in the gasket set, but I hang on to them anyway because I want to make sure that I remember that we need those and we don't, um, if they don't come in the gasket set, we make sure we order them. Okay, let's see what we have here. More nuts and bolts, nuts and bolts, nuts and bolts, exhaust studs so that, uh, and again, some of the, the three of the cylinders are out for overhaul, so uh, this fourth one is, uh, will be going out for rework, but the, um, and, you know, there's there's this exhaust stud that came out. Pretty typical. Uh, the rest of the hardware is kind of rubbish, but that will give us a count for replacement hardware. So we just kind of hang on to all of that. 
Boom, boom. Plastic cup in the trash. Okay, another box. Isn't this fun? Isn't this the way you want to get an engine? Okay. Uh, these are the rubbers for the intake tubes. One, two, three, four. Four, where's our other hose clamp? Hose clamp, hose clamp, hose clamp. I typically will put, no, put new hose clamps in. I'll buy new hose clamps because it's that easy. And I don't see the other hose clamp. Here's another drain back tube. So we're gonna put all this in this bin here. Stuff in the nuts and bolts, things that need to be replaced. Okay, what do we have here? Oil pan, and in, in uh, aircraft we call it, even though it's an oil pan, we call it oil sump, because that's what we call it. That's what we do. Look at all this hardware. This is all just normal, normal regular run-of-the-mill hardware, and it all looks like standard stuff, nothing fancy there. We'll put this in the replate, reclean inventory bag. Boom, get rid of that. So we know where that goes. Um, okay, this is the oil pressure relief valve. What we'll probably do there is we'll double check the ball, make sure it's good. We'll refinish the cap and then we'll get a new spring. Um, and I'm looking at the spring, it looks pretty well chafed. So we will get a new spring. Let me open it up for you so you can see what I'm talking about. Da -da 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 -da. So this is the, the spring goes in here. Uh, looks like there may be some washers stacked in there. We'll have to double check that out. And that's the way that works there. So that's your oil pressure relief. Hill, come back. So we'll put that back in there, clean it up separately. And I'm gonna put that in that bag. What is this? Accessory bolts. Same thing with the rest of it. Um, this is just standard hardware. I'm good with that. So nothing fancy there. We'll go through it, see which is good, see which goes in the rubbish. Cool. Get rid of that. Uh, bolts for nose case. Okay, these are going to be the four or two bolts. These, I believe, are an AN bolt. Um, and we may just buy new ones, or they may be a Lycoming bolt. Uh, this, no, this is an AN bolt, so that's good. We'll just buy replacement bolts, but we'll put that in the replacement bolt bag. Anyway. Okay, cam case bolt. Okay, this is, if you if you followed my other 0360, this is what I call the secret bolt. This is behind the cam, um, behind the cam on the uh, the cam gear and all that. So it's got a special nut and all. So uh, kind of important. So we're gonna hang on to that. I'm actually gonna leave that in that bag because it identifies it, but I'm gonna put it, I'll put it over there. Okay, here we go, real important. These are the cups, get rid of that. These are the cups for the, we had the hydraulic units for the lifters. And these are all the cups we should have. What we want to do in this bag is count eight. And I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got all those. These really don't need anything but cleaning and whatnot. They're under compression. They're really not a stressed item. So these get cleaned, lubricated, inspected, and repackaged. Okay. Magneto gears, boom, boom. Those will go for NDI at our machine shop. So put those down here. Oh, one of the gears, I'll show you. These, these are basically Magneto drive idler gears. One of the gears has an eccentric on it, and that's for pushing your push rod for your fuel pump. So that's what that's, you can see the difference on them. Um, they've got match marks on them. When we, timing marks, and I'll show you that. They've got a zero etch tier, a zero etch tier, and then the cam will also have markings on it. So those are there, ready to go for magnetic particle inspection and whatnot. Okay, oil screen, or the pan plug. So we will clean this up. We can do that here, clean that up. Um, I'll probably send the, I'll put this in the replate bag. I'll send the uh, plug nut out for replate, get it cleaned up. Um, okay, this is an adapter for the magneto. I think it's the left magneto, I think. I could be wrong. We'll actually hang on to the gaskets because uh, we want to do that. Um, 
But this spaces the magneto, the one magneto out, so it has an impulse coupling on it. Now, <clears throat> some people have said they have hard starting like Comings. There's a service bolt that allows you to put two impulse coupling magnetos out. Um, you might look that up. That's kind of neat if you have hard starting. Normally these start very well, but uh, if you want to put two on, then you'd end up putting new studs, studs on and adding another spacer and an impulse coupling magneto. This will be um, cleaned, inspected, repainted, and uh, ready to go back in. Oil filter housing. Um, the older engines did not have these, and then there's also the Vernitherm, which is, there's a bug zapping around here. Um, so, and then it also has the oil pressure sensor here. This will just get, again, cleaned up, inspected, painted and all that, we'll do that here. So oil filter goes on there. If you do not have an oil filter on your engine, put an oil filter on your engine. It's the best thing you can do. Get, keep trash away from those bearings. So this will get cleaned up and all that made pretty. Um, this is the propeller governor pad. And um, this we'll end up taking apart with our, uh, a um, circlip. We'll pull that out. Steel shaft will go to inspection. So that goes there. We'll just leave that here for now. Okay, connecting rod. Zoom, 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 zoom. Okay, primer lines. Um, same thing on the primer lines. We've got one here. I've got another one. Let's see where it is. Primer lines. Um, we'll go and figure out these and see what's going on. These go around. These go around the oil sump, the back of the engine here, and up to one cylinder. And then uh, this one goes up to two other cylinders. So on this engine, you prime three cylinders. So that's kind of the way that works. It's, this stuff is um, soft copper. So uh, we'll clean it up, see how it looks. If there's any chafes, we'll scrap it and whatnot. It's got the uh, ball fitting type uh, swage on the ends. And these are, um, these are sweated on here and here, and then it's got uh, AN deal there. So that's your primer for a typical like homing. Little standoffs that go along the back of the oil sump here and here. So that's what's going on there. Those will get cleaned up, degreased, inspected, return to service. Okay, we're getting to the bottom of this box, which is kind of cool. In fact, I'm gonna take all this crap out of here. Okay, here's an AN fitting off of something. We'll have to figure out that. Alternator or generator bracket. Um, and this mounts on the front. This, this is the front of the engine. This mounts on the split line. This is your pivot for the one lug of the alternator. And this goes on the front of the case. And this is, uh, for aiming at you now, this is the, um, this is the uh, bracket for the um, other end of the alternator. So it's got a bolt in it and all that. So we're actually going to take that off. That way I don't get poked. And then... Um, the bolt will go into the hardware. This will get um, repainted, inspected, cleaned, and all that. So that goes there. This goes into the hardware bag. This goes into the hardware bag. It's a plumbing fitting. We'll clean that up. Okay, let's see what's in this bag. Okay, this one's empty. Boom, get rid of that. I was going to bring, I was going to wear my rubber gloves and I completely forgot them. Oh well. These are the standoffs for the um, idler gears. So there's that. They have four bolts that hold them, hold them on. These will be replaced. Circlip. Uh, circlip is for holding the um, circlip is for holding the oil pump shaft in. Um, the back of the cam. Where's the back of the cam? This is held in here. In fact, this thing's loose, not supposed to be loose. Uh, this is held in here like that, and then a circlip holds it in, and that spins your tachometer shaft, okay? So that's that. Um, we'll put a new one of these in. A lot of times you'll get dirt and it'll wear this out, but this is kind of part of the standard replacement part. So that goes kind of in the rubbish. That's okay. Locking tabs, we'll get new ones. Man, they are just flies all over the place. I don't know what's going on. Probably lights. Um, we've got locking tabs for these. Um, these were actually on some engines, older engines, these bolts were held on with, um, these were uh, safety wired on and all that, and these have been since replaced with locking tabs, so pretty sure that's a deal. Anyway, these, this hardware will all be replaced, that's special hardware. These two parts will go out for die penetrant 
and uh, inspection and all that. So that goes to the machine shop. Boom. Okay, this goes in that bin. What else we have here? Carburetor. Boom, carburetor. Carburetor, we really don't do much in the carburetor. We're gonna send this out for overhaul. I would overhaul the carburetor, except uh, as often as I do them, the manuals are just crazy expensive. So it's not, doesn't make sense for me to do that. So this will go out for overhaul. This is a big MA4-5. Uh, looks like it's got the Venturi mod. Um, and this is, uh, this is the difference between, uh, if you look at an 0320, it has an MA3 SPA, a uh, smaller one. Uh, it's about 75% of the size of this. 0360, bigger carburetor. And actually, same basic carburetor that goes on an 0470 Continental. Um, 200, 220, 230 horsepower. Pretty much everything from 180 to about 230 horsepower. Uh, carburetor, pretty much standard stuff. Uh, even the PT-19 Rangers, are uh, they have those. So we're going to, uh, this is, a, again, aircraft fuel line. When we send this out, um, you can see this uh, staining or something, probably from exhaust. Uh, we're going to double check these hoses and all and uh, replace those if necessary. Uh, but before we send this out, we're going to make sure that uh, we're going to take pictures of the fittings and all that. If you're not sure of your shop, you've never worked with them, take this fitting off, bag it, tag it, especially if they're very unique fittings, and then just take a picture of it, how it's clocked, so that when you do get it back, you can put it back on. So that's what's going on there. Let's see if there's any fuel in this thing. Nope, bone dry. Okay, cool. So this thing's been off a while. So this will go to the accessory shop for carburetors. We, we're not gonna do that. Put that back there. Okay, that's all that's there. Now, I'm just looking at stuff. We don't have the tappets. I figured as much. Um, we've got the rod bearings and all, so we're going to take these apart. I'm going to take a quick break. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these bolts out and go get some tie wraps. But what I typically do is I will take all of the um, take all these bolts out. Actually, maybe I can do it now. I don't know. Do I have my rubber mallet? I don't think I have my rubber mallet. Um, and I don't want to tear up my fingers doing this. I'll get my little screwdriver and we'll get these out. But what we're going to do is I'm going to take all of the, um, all these bearings out and uh, then put these back together with uh, tie wrap them back together. The other thing I want to make sure is that these are match marked, these are engraved. Um, I'll make sure that these are all tie wrapped just to make it easier for the shop. When they get them, you can either use a brass wire. I try not to use stainless steel. Safety wire, I try to use a, a tie wrap or a brass wire. You just don't want to tear these up. These are very nice. Uh, you'll also see that the finish on these versus an 0320, these are all polished. Uh, whereas an 0320, you'll see the rough forge on most of this. This area here will be uh, polished on a 320, but this area here typically on a 320 is rough forge. So the 360 rods are uh, a bit nicer. So I'm going to go zip next door, go get some tie wraps. I'll be right back. And probably a rubber hammer. Okay, I'll show you what I'm doing on this last one. I was just trying to get stuff organized here. It's kind of tough to organize everything on a take apart, but trying my best. Um, we're just taking the bolts, um, the bolts and nuts out. A lot of times when you take it off the engine, uh, you, you'll put the caps back in to keep them together because it's uh, kind of a dirty, messy job, and you'll, they'll just uh, folks will just put them back together. Uh, that's just the way it is. This one here, actually, when they put it together. They didn't put it together the right way. It should have been like that. Not a big deal. It's all dis disassembly. Sometimes these bolts are very hard to get out. Sometimes the bearings are hard to get out. That one just came out. So this is kind of neat. Bolts come out. These bolts are one time use. These will go in the trash. We're going to put them in the, the uh, bolt cleanup area because we'll at least know which ones to reorder. So I'll keep all that together and then I'll slowly work her through that, figure out which stuff to keep, which stuff to reorder, throw away. So uh, this is the way I do it. There's a little locking tab on these um, bearings, pretty much any insert bearing. There's a small anti-rotation locking tab that um, is on the uh, bearing and uh, it's, it's in this area here. So what we do is we just pop it on the other side here to get it up. If it doesn't come out easy, in that little tab area we take just a little itty bitty screwdriver, just come in here like that and kind of work it out. Comes right out, so kind of neat. Um, and you can see here 
Uh, the bearings, all the bearings look pretty good. There's a little scratch mark on one of them. The other thing is you'll, I'll hear people talk about, well, do you put oil underneath those bearings when you put them in? And the answer is yes, we do. And you can see here an engine that's running, all of these are just full of oil. Um, so don't worry about um, putting oil on stuff. Uh, the, manu the manual says put them in wet, put them in wet. And um, even after they're clamped and all that, you will still have oil migrating in there. So then what I do here is I take these, get these matched up, get this out of the way, and then get my tie wrap here. Zoom. Get a tie wrap on that one. Get a tie wrap on this one. This is nice because it's soft plastic. It's not going to mess up the uh, connecting rod. And when it gets to the inspection shop, they're easy to cut. So pretty good deal. So what we've got here now is these are all ready. This set of four connecting rods is now all ready to go to the machine shop. They'll end up taking these upper bushings, pressing those out, and putting new bushings in. They'll check for straightness. Um, they'll check for twist. Um, and then they'll also replace this bushing on the upper end. So that's typical overhaul uh, type stuff. Um, so that's where, that's where these are headed to, the machine shop for that. So this goes in the machine shop pile. Okay. Bearings, we're going to put the bearings in, the, in the, our miscellaneous bolt bag so that we can inventory those and order new ones. Tie wrap cutoffs go in the trash. Connecting rod bolts and nuts will also go in my big nut bolt, nut bolt bag so that we can inventory these. Go back here. We're going to inventory these and reorder all new ones. They, that stuff is not included in a gasket set, so don't expect to be looking for it. That has to be ordered separately. Okay, magnetos. We're going to take these screws off the back. Um, these are Bendix screws, not like combing, so I want to keep those in good shape. I'm looking at, just looking at these here, there's a crap ton of oil on these. Um, they're they're a Bendix Magneto, great Magneto. Dare I say better than a slick, um, less expensive than a slick. To overhaul, very reliable if you take care of them. So every 500 hours, if you're not inspecting your Magnetos every 500 hours, Inspect them and inspect them to the book. Don't just open them up, look at them, put them back together. That doesn't do you any good. <clears throat> okay. Differences in the magnetos. You can see these are both actually very, they're twin sisters, but they're not exactly the same. Let's see. I'll take all this stuff off when you take it over to the overhaul shop. This magneto does not have an impulse coupling. This magneto does. Typically, like homing engines, uh, the four cylinders have one impulse coupling. Um, so you're going to have one of each part number, just a thing, not a big deal. If your magnetos are timed, your, per, per, your, your, uh, everything's the way it's supposed to be, your engine should run very well. If things aren't adjusted, you haven't been paying attention, you've got some uh, drift, then you are going to have starting issues. Or you may have somebody that doesn't know how to start an engine, which is uh, in students is um, they've got to understand um, how to set the uh, throttle and all that stuff in a normally aspirated carbureted engine. So we're just taking these off. Let's see if I can get this off. Okay, normally I'll do this over in the magneto shop, but what we're doing here is this, these gears are like combing gears. So these gears will go to the machine shop with all of the rest of the steel parts. They'll be magnetic particle inspectioned and uh, come back uh, all ready to go. Okay, I'm going to fast forward this while I fight this silly cutter key. Never do anything on film or video. Okay, here we go. That was a devil of a time getting these. This one magneto cutter key did not want to come out. They're stainless steel. They're in a recess here. This one, for some reason, should have been the easier one to come out. I don't know. It's being a butthead tonight. So, uh, what we're doing here is we're using this. This is actually kind of cool. This is a, a, actually a motorcycle tool originally. Um, this is made by Tusk. It's for taking sprockets apart. However, what we did is we uh, machined it for the volutes on the uh, gears, and we use this for taking our gears out, um, or pardon me, our magneto um, nuts off. So definitely don't use, don't put the, the gears in a vise. Uh, some mechanics will do that. Just um, use the, uh, and my dog's barking at something. Um, 
use this. It works like a champ. Um, but what we want to do is we want to take the gear off and then that will go to the machine shop also. So boom, boom, comes off. And then I'll, this is the uh, AD note for the center bronze bushing. And put that back in. Doggy dog, making noise. And this is all Bendix parts now. So this will go to our test bench or our, our rework shop for that. And that's, uh, that's something we have in the other shop. So that's that one. This will go to the machine shop. Let's see if this guy will come off and be hospitable. Put that on, stay, stay. And of course, it's a different size. Why make it the same size? That would just be silly. And then just kind of come in here. Oops. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Nice and snug. And we come in here like that. Nice and easy. Take it apart. These gears also get a lot of varnish on them, um, whatnot. So if you do take them out for a 500 hour inspection, clean the gears, make sure everything's clean that way. And then, come on baby. Let's see if this thing will give it up. Oh, this one, we're gonna have to put the puller on this one because it's, it's on a taper. So we're just gonna leave this one be for now. That's about it, tearing stuff apart. Tearing, I hate to use the term tearing stuff apart, disassembling it for machine shop work. Now that we do know um, I'm missing push rod tubes, I'm missing rocker arms, or pardon me, push rod tubes, push rods, rocker arms, um, tappets. I think the tappets are trash, but I'm um, missing those. Um, but I'm going to have to go, I, I can't go and take this stuff to the machine shop just yet. We're going to have to go back down to the customer's building and dig through boxes that's all over the place. So that's where we are on this set, um, but what we can do is uh, Magneto's can go to, uh, as soon as I get the gear off, Magneto's can go over to uh, Overhaul, get those going. We can send the carburetor out, get that going. Fuel pump, um, start cleaning up a lot of these parts that are going to be, uh, we're going to refurbish locally here. Uh, valve covers, I need to find the other three valve covers. So there's a box with more stuff that I've got to go digging through the uh, customer's hangar and find out where the stuff is. So, anywho. That's it for engine disassembly. We'll take apart this thing too. All this is is just a, a circ clip and then that slides out. So that'll go to the machine shop. I'm gonna get that stuff done, finish it up, call it a night tonight. But this was kind of a long one. However, um, that's the series. It's gonna be 0360 A1A narrow deck. So a little bit different from the last one. And uh, we'll catch you guys later. Hang rats out.